This is Duke University. Um, my name is Anu Siddiqui. I'm a doctoral student at the Institute of Fine Arts in New York University. When the Dab refugee camp was set up, no one could have imagined its destiny. It was supposed to be open for only a few months. Twenty years on, it's still here. Its capacity was for 90,000. Today, it hosts almost half a million people, including thousands of third-generation refugees born in the camp. The paradox with a space like this, um, it is the third largest population grouping in Kenya right now. Um, after Nairobi and Mombasa. Um, there are a lot of people living there who are formal um, refugees registered with the UNHCR and the government of Kenya. Um, there are a lot of people living there informally who are unregistered. That's not unlike a lot of metro metropolitan areas um, where there are citizens and there are non-citizens sharing space. Um, in this case, the situation is complicated from an architectural perspective because there's a sort of formal um, set of boundaries to the space. Um, you can read that legibly from satellite, um, from aerial photographs, um, and yet there isn't the same sort of um, representation that one might find in a, in a state. These first refugees were fleeing the 1991 civil war in Somalia. Over the years, ongoing anarchy, drought, and famine pushed out hundreds of thousands more. The state of Kenya ratified um, the 1951 Convention on the Status of Refugees, but um, took exception to the right to work, the right to education. Technically, we all have the same set of human rights that have been enshrined in certain documents. Um, registered refugees have certain rights vis-a-vis -vis the host state of Kenya. It occurred to me over lots of historical reading around conflicts, particularly in the post-Cold War period, that there was a lot of talk about space, but no real concrete understanding of the architecture of territory, um, of, of political territory, I should say. I started to get very interested in spaces like refugee camps that are overdetermined by the political borders that they are adjacent to, and they are often defined as extraterritorial spaces in a lot of the literature. But in fact, that's just the opposite of what they are. There are many, many nations still asserting themselves within these spaces. Um, and so I started getting really interested, almost from an ethnographic point of view, of what the architecture of these spaces were and what the history of that architecture might be. Um, what I th learned was that it's very difficult to do a history of architecture around refugee camps as a type. There is a history of architecture culture to them. There's a spatial politics. There's a history of spatial practice. Um, all of these kinds of material, visual, spatial, um, very concrete aspects could be historicized. And that sort of drew me to that as a, as a place to start. Produced by Duke University. Online at duke.edu.